Hello and in today's video we're going to look at Darwin's Choice, a new card driven evolution game where you can have a rhino, great white ostrich crab for example. So it's going to be a little bit random just like evolution I guess. As you can see on the back cover here it's for two to six players of 10 years or older, um, about an hour to two hours with lots of chips, lots of animal cards, biomes, events, and obviously a nice rule book. And there is a rules explanation QR code here, so you might want to grab that and have a look at that. And it's been published by Tree Ceratops. Uh, this was a Kickstarter edition. Um, I'm not sure how different this is going to be to a retail copy. So let's dig open the box and have a look at the lovely artwork on the cards. Well, the first thing you get on opening up are the chits here. There's quite a few of them. Nice bit of Darwin action going on there. And what's that? One, two, three, four boards by the looks of it. We've got our rules here. Oh, more boards. So, wow, quite a lot of boards there. Um, so, yeah, loads of boards. We've then got some cards. These are slightly unusual size, sadly. And um, yeah, that's going to be a bit of a problem for sleeve-in. And the insert's just a cheap bit of cardboard so you can bin it if you don't like it. And some baggies, which is always good to see. The card tokens are a decent thickness. They punch out reasonably well. Fairly nice, clean cut, lovely artwork. So yeah, pretty happy with those. Now I have had a couple of tokens where it's not come out quite so cleanly, but on the whole, the tokens have been pretty good, but yeah, um, might need a little bit of wood glue or something just to fix up some of these tokens where the, obviously the cut-in die hasn't gone all the way through the token. But well, I finally got all the tokens punched out. You've got loads of these one sort of point tokens, a few five, a couple of tens, a load of vegetarian, meaty, um, some trophies, some, um, I believe these are biomes, and then a whole load of kind of animal tokens as well and it took quite a while and I, I think maybe they've given us too many of these point tokens I would have preferred I think more come on focus there you go more of the food tokens well now that I've got the uh, cards all separated out you've got your animal cards these two blue ones so this is your kind of main body so for example here we have a giant anteater and then here we could give it Albatross wings, so for example, I could put on its uh, back here, albatross wings, and then I've got a whole load of wings here. Let me dig deeper into the pile. Then I might choose to give it a harpy eagle head with um, a sea otter tail. Now, obviously, there's a way of linking these bits with sort of arrows. Um, so I'm going to have to work out how to do that. Uh, as I said, it's been quite a while since I backed this on the Kickstarter campaign. But, you know, I've got a harpy eagle, giant anteater, albatross, sea otter. And that would give me quite a few tails, um, three wings, a couple of cups. It would eat meat. Um, it's got this ability here, which I think is running. And it's got a little heart symbol here. And that all means stuff. Um, so we dig into that in a bit so anyway so that's your animal cards so as you can see the, the blue backed ones you've then got your green backs here which are biomes so you can have a coral reef which gives you five vegetables six meat you need um, swimming adaptation or maybe uh, that's more ocean right let's here you go the coast which gives you five veg five meat swimming flying is good dig in a bit deeper so here you go tundra five veg four meat and it's sort of cold um not good for i think places uh, you know people that like hot uh, stuff then the next uh, deck here is your events these do nasty things and can be random so plant boom during the next era the food supply of each biome is set to six veg three meat only difficult to access ones uh, have you know, ignore that. Mountain formation, when biome changes, a high mountains or highlands biome replaces a randomly drawn biome. Additionally, all high mountains and highlands already on the table are protected from being exchanged. 
and then at the bottom here there's a flood all species without swimming flying or climbing i want to say die out so these are kind of gotcha cards that the game randomly will do and obviously the more specialized your creature the more likely it is to be wiped out uh, but the more specialized the creature the more victory points it's going to give you or darwin points so you've got to sort of balance out the randomness of the game um, which is very again like evolution highly specialized creatures do really well until environmental changes come along or species changes come along and then the specialists are in trouble uh, the next one is continental cards so you've got your various continent cards which match up with little tokens and uh, there you go so there's those uh, leave africa there and the final deck we've got here are your overview cards which are just your you know summary of how to play which you hand out to each player so there's 12 of those because there's two cards and up to six players we turn our attention to the rulebook you've got a summary of the decks there you've got a summary of all the chips here and as you can see the abilities are running swimming flying cold heat climbing digging and poisonous you then have an explanation of the animal card so the species how competitive it is what nutrition it needs the total number of hearts uh, how much food it needs uh, and how much meat it provides docking bits to you know attach bits ability symbols special abilities uh, the biome so what food it provides what adaptation you need requirements uh, the number of darwin points that you win by being in here so mountains give you two darwin points um so it tends to be two or three according to the rule book so how to prepare the game sort of laying it out here the gameplay the action phases the additional actions trade in um the main actions creating your creature so you've got all that there uh, mutating your creatures evaluating your creatures so getting points basically so how do you feed things um, survival competitive competitive strength transition with events um, and then there's some explanation of those event cards here so that's good now at the back of the book uh, you've got various versions of the game so you've got a beginner's game two player two versus two co-op so that's a nice little feature child friendly rules so you can play with seven year olds and then just a thank you for uh, buying the game and a nice little summary on the back of the rule book so really really great um very happy with this um the game looks fantastic i mean this artwork is beautiful and oh nice uh, jaguar back there with lots of bits to attach to so some some animals obviously are more adaptable than others well i made up some random creatures here so we've got a golden snub-nosed monkey southern screaming african elephant eurasian beaver rock ptarmigan common bottlenose dolphin so you can see i've got one two three four five cold adaptations a couple of running climbing um swimming and flying so that's um you know, a bit of a crazy creature then here we got pacific cleaner shrimp b visacha uh, who likes cold um we got a western gorilla whale shark Taliga Jaguar. Uh, we've got a narwhal, humpback whale, jaguar, monarch, butterfly, arctic fox. So in theory, we could have put this jaguar down here instead of the whale shark. A red and green macaw, kangaroo, coconut, crab, rattlesnake. And then last but not least, our Nile crocodile, Livingston's fruitback, tamarind. So we literally have a flying monkey. Excellent. So there you go. Um, so that's just random. That's not necessarily how you would actually set stuff up in a game. But that's how you might choose to do it. And as you can see, you get this beautiful artwork. Lots of stuff. Loads more here. I mean, these are various other cards here. But really lovely. Great artwork. Great setup. Great concept. So how do you actually play the game? Well, to play the game, the first thing you're going to need to do, obviously, is set up your biome. So we've got four biomes here. So we've got the hot semi-desert, the mountains, the wetland, and the hard-to-reach polar wastes down here. And this is based on players. So with three to four players, you use four biomes. With five to six, five. So you'd get an extra one. So let's say we've got an extra player, and we would tag on the tropical rainforest. And these are where you can choose to place your species. So if you want to live in the wetlands... You'd, you'd put your species in the wetlands. 
You then take a continental chip and place it uh, on things. So let's uh, chuck one on. So for example, we might say this is Eurasia, uh, this is down south, etc. So as you can see, um, we've got four food and four meat. So I put four, um, you know, veg and four meat on this particular environment. So when creatures come to live in this environment, they will end up eating this food. And if the food gets depleted, then obviously there's going to be problems for the animals living there. At this point, the players draw 10 of these cards. So I could draw one of these, three of these, whatever. Uh, and you can draw them individually. So I can draw that. And then based on this, right, okay, so I've got two attachment points. So maybe I might choose to take the little one or I might take a risk on one of these big ones. So let's say I take a risk on one of these big ones and I draw, um, let's say, this Jaguar. So I now know when I come to assemble my animal, I'm going to have it like this. So I now need some little ones. So I draw three little ones. So I'm going to get a little puffin head. Uh, I've got an elephant. Doesn't do much for me. Uh, right. That doesn't do much for me either. So let me try something else. Let's see what we got. Um, let's say I draw myself a bee. Um, and then let's say, do I get a tail from somewhere? Uh, let's see, I've got a tail lurking here. Where's my stack of cards gone? Why can you never find stuff when you're filming? Ah, oh, there you go. So I get my bottlenose dolphin. So one, two, three, four, five, plus my other two face, six, seven. So I've still got three cards to draw. So maybe I draw another big card. Actually, I've got some here. So here you go. So I'm going to draw my kangaroo. So I could always turn it into an orangutan. I could draw another card. So maybe this time I get myself a tamarind so I can fit that. So how many have I got there? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So I draw my last one from here and it happens to be a sea turtle. Anyway, there you go. Now I should point out at this point, you haven't actually got to build your animals. This is purely just drawing your cards. So here are my 10 cards I'm gonna be playing with. So we then take an action phase where we create our species, uh, mutate or move them. Then we go into the evaluation phase where we determine which species become extinct, which can eat, which are eaten, more successful species fight for survival, and you get Darwin points basically. And then in the transition phase, we potentially trigger events and create new biome cards. And um, that's basically going to tell us what's happening in the next era. So in the action phase, uh, each turn one player performs one action. Uh, if you can't perform an action, you pass. And then, you know, eventually that round will end. So you can choose to draw cards. You can choose to trade cards. Um, or you can actually uh, perform an action. So you'll have the, the little animal tokens and you flip it over to say you've done your action. Uh, and basically, um, where they're going to start building an animal. So I might choose to say, okay, let's start off with the tamarind. So he's got climbing, which we need for the mountains. Uh, it also for the tropical rainforest. Uh, he's also got the running, which is here. So maybe, maybe I'm going to put a golden tamarind in the tropical rainforest. So, you know, I'm going to create a body, but I also need a head. So what am I going to do for a head? Well, hmm, flying would be quite useful which I don't really have, but I do have a B, so maybe I'm gonna make my flying monkey. There you go. And there's equal amounts of food and um, veg. So maybe, 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 yeah, let's make him an orangutan. There you go, so I've got an orangutan mandarin B, and that should be able to live in the tropical rainforest down here quite happily. Now it looks like this creature needs two food, so I'm going to get two veg because it's a vegetarian and this animal is potentially going to try and eat two veg. Now obviously if some predator comes along it might um, eat my orangutan bee or uh, alternatively a more aggressive vegetarian might steal these chips off me and then I've got problems. So yeah, got to watch out for that. So there you go, that's my animal species done. Another player might go. They might play, for example, in the polar region, um, the southern Visatia, um, where's it head? Narwhal. Uh, there you go. 
and they don't bother using the, the wings bit. Okay, so that's it in the polar desert. So obviously you'd have to space these cards out to, to be obvious. And that's a meat eater, so it's gonna get uh, two bits of meat potentially. There you go. Um, so on and so forth and round and round we go. Now it might be, I suddenly decide that maybe I don't want to use a B here. Maybe I want to use something else. So maybe uh, I want a monarch butterfly for some reason. I know why, dear, why? So I choose to mutate this from a bee to a monarch butterfly. Maybe the bee only had one wing and I wanted two wings, for example. So I would do that and that would be a mutation action. Now, another action I might decide is that may maybe this tropical rainforest isn't looking like a good idea. Maybe I actually want to move to the mountains for some reason. Well, the problem is that you need to be adapted to the cold. So maybe that's not gonna work for me, but maybe I actually want to move to the wetlands instead so I could move. So I would take this animal and move it to the new location. But I think tropical rainforest is the best location. So let's actually, let's get rid of all the other bits. Let's just use these two um, locations here. So we'll get rid of all those others up here. They're gone. So we've just got our polar desert and our tropical rainforest. So every player's gone, so we now get to the evaluation phase. So we've now got to check the requirements. We've got to check the icons along the bottom here, the icons on the card, whether they've got enough food, etc., etc. So the first thing we want to do is we want to see if we've got enough food. So because there's only one animal in each location, it's going to be nice and easy. However, if there was competition, then there could be problems. So there is enough food. Happy days. Now, you do your herbivores, so your plant eaters, before you do your carnivores. So herbivores that have enough food chips, they survive. Happy days. Omnivores that have enough food chips, they survive. Happy days. Carnivores that have enough food chips, they survive. Happy days. However, if there's not enough food, then potentially you start to get into competition, and obviously meat eaters are likely to start eating other players' creatures, which maybe is not so good for them. So yeah, watch out for that. And obviously you die out if you can't feed. So how it works is based on the amount of heart. So both of our animals at the moment need two hearts. Obviously if you had different body requirements, um, you might need more food. Let's see if I got one, yeah, here you go. So if for example, I'd actually had a Malayan tapir, I'd have actually needed an extra food. I would have needed three food and that could give me problems. So you do need to watch out for that when building your creatures is how much food do you get from here? How much food do you need, etc., etc. And by the way, I've added these little player markers to indicate. So in the game, the yellow tang player is this guy and the koala bear player is this person. Now, if you do actually uh, have competition, let's say this orangutan was competing with the narwhal, for example, this is where you would check the adaptations against the requirements. So climbing, flying, running. So I've got one running and four climbing and two flying. So potentially this would outcompete um, this guy over here who's got lots of frost, a bit of swimming, but only two climbing and two running. Now, my reading of this is you do climb in, then fly in, then run in. So I win, so I get to eat first. Then the narwhal would eat after me if it could. Um, so that's something you need to do. And that is actually explained in the rule book over here. It talks about the adaptation, the order in which food. And it's quite complex. I mean, there's one, two, three bits talking all about it. Anyway, once you've done that, each species that's still in the game gets a Darwin point. And then, you know, obviously when you die out... Um, potentially those Darwin points can get lost. So you've got to watch out for that. And in the rule book, this little number here is the bonus Darwin points you get for being the most ad adapted. So in this situation, the orangutan would get two, the narwhal would get three. But if we were in the same location, like say the narwhal was with the orangutan, well, the orangutan is better adapted than the narwhal. So the orangutan would get two bonus points, so a total of three. The narwhal would only get the one for surviving potentially. Once you've done the adaptation, you look for these little cups here. So I've got three, whereas the narwhal has two. And again, if we were in the same location, you would work out who's the most competitive. Uh, first place gets three points, second place gets two, third place gets one. And um, there is some rules about ties. 
And again, that is listed here. At this point, we would have an event. Now, the events are actually revealed, so you know what's coming up. So, intruders, all players lose the species that has the most Darwin points. Well, that's pretty horrible. And the Darwin points of the extinct species are redistributed to the player's remaining species. So, you know that's coming up. So, you would probably, you know, in this circumstances, you wouldn't have wanted to build one animal each. That would be bad. So, if we pretend these are both the bear player, well, one of these is going to die off. Let's say it's this guy over here, so he dies off, and the points from this guy would then be put onto the orangutan, and these guys go to the discard pile. Sad for them. They have failed to evolve properly. Now you will notice there are some symbols, so intruders is an instant effect, but you might have a little um, dude there who is a permanent effect. The next step is we change our biomes. So with three to four players, we replace two in the first era and second. And in the third era, we, oh, sorry, my mistake. In the first era, we draw two. In the second and third, we draw three. With five to six players, it's three, then four, then four. So, you know, if you've heavily adapted to, you know, be able to live in the polar desert, well, suddenly you might have to actually find that you're actually needing to adapt to the wetlands and that could be a bit of a problem. Obviously at this point this food disappears so we'd maybe redistribute it to here um, and away we go. There's then a little bit of cleanup with player markers, the trade zone and players replenish their hand and then the uh, first player marker moves counterclockwise so you know that means everyone gets a nice chance to go and then after the fourth uh, era that is the last era and the person with the most darwin points these guys and um, they win the game so there you go um here's a summary of the rules that you can use to play the game the tricky bit with the game is the competition for food and who gets the food once you get that all sorted i think the game is relatively easy to play um the biggest problem with obviously the game is the random nature which could really hurt you if you don't plan accordingly um, but you are getting to draw 10 cards every round or up to 10 cards every round I should say so you should be able to mutate your guy now um, part of the problem with mutation by the way is you might have to spend Darwin points to mutate so watch out for that you might have to give away your victory points to to make sure for example your species doesn't get wiped out but maybe that's a good idea because if you've got like eight darwin points on a particular creature you don't want to discard all of those victory points uh, because you only get to keep one if your creature sort of dies out basically um, so maybe spending two or three darwin points to mutate your creature is better um, than losing seven victory points. So um, there is some luck mitigation in the games, which should stop you tearing your hair out if you if you don't like too much luck. But obviously these event cards, they could be absolutely brutal. The um, continental changes, so here you go. Suddenly, right, okay, if you're in Australia, you need to watch out that it's going to get replaced. Um, so yeah, watch out for that. Um, I think the rule book uh, is pretty easy to follow. Uh, the tokens are good quality. The artwork is really, really good. Um, so yeah, I think this is a fun little game. Uh, as I say, the biggest problem is going to be working out, you know, the the symbols and who's the most dominant, who's going to get the points, who's going to get this. So there is a little bit of fiddly bookkeeping, but yeah, apart from that, very good. Anyway, hope you've enjoyed that quick look at Darwin's Choice. And um, this game, I believe, is going to go to retail. So uh, I'm not sure if it's in retail right now, but um, Kickstarter backers are receiving their copy this month. So um, hopefully lots of people get a chance to play this lovely looking game.